All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We are going to set up Giro, which is an image forensics platform. And then we're gonna load data from Hunchly directly into Giro so that you can either collaborate with people on doing image analysis, or if you wanna build up say an organization wide kind of repository of images, maybe you're doing child exploitation work or human trafficking work. This is a great opportunity where investigators can actually pull all their data together, their there are images that Hunchly's automatically extracted and shovel them into Giro so that you can work on it as a team. So this is really cool stuff. And we're also gonna walk through um, towards the tail end how we can leverage the Hunchly API and a little bit of Python to automatically create cases in Giro that are named the same as your cases in Hunchly and how to automatically shovel up all the photographs or images that are inside of a particular Hunchly case. So we'll explore that, not in too much depth, but it's um, something you're gonna see more from us as we develop more and more code and, and we release some more open source kind of scripts that you can see how you can pull data out of Hunchly using the API and kind of use it in a bunch of flexible ways. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to getgiro.org. The link will be in the description below as well as in the blog post. And it's very simple to set up. You have a couple of kind of options here. You can either download a zip or tarball with all the code and then deploy it yourself. They have instructions in the documentation on the site on how to do that. Or my preferred method, because it's I'm just working off a single machine, is to download the OVA file. Now the OVA file is a virtual machine image that you can use with VirtualBox, which is free. Or my method is to use VMware Fusion, I'm on a Mac, or VMware Workstation, which will also import OVAs. And once that import happens, it's just a couple of mouse clicks, you can just fire the Giro appliance up. So we're gonna show you what that looks like. So when I fire it up here, this is just a VMware window. It'll take a couple of seconds to boot. It's based on Linux as well, as you can tell. And the reason why I wanna show you this is because there's some important information here. So the appliance IP address, this is where my where I'm able to actually go with my browser to view the Giro web app. So everything you do is done through the Giro web app and it also tells me the credentials. So Giro and Giro manager, if you wanna log into the Linux machine locally, you can. Um, you can even do things like you can create a folder locally on the Giro appliance where you shovel all of your uh, photos in and then you can tell it to load those photos from there. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna use the upload method. But now we know the IP address, it's 192.168.7.110. So let's actually just crack a browser window. Handily enough, I have one open. And let's log in for the first time. So Giro and Giro Manager. All right, cool. So much like Hunchly, Giro is broken down into cases. So this allows you to organize all the images based on case. Of course, this works very well for Hunchly. And we see we can actually manage users as well. So you can have multiple users that have their own login, as well as you'll see later, you can have users with their own API keys too. So if you're doing uh, bulk kind of uploads from your machines, maybe you got 10 of you on a team, uh, it'll break it down based on which user actually uploaded those images, which is really handy. So currently we have no cases, it's just blank in here. So let's just create one and I'll show you how you can do the manual data load at a Hunchly without using the Hunchly API. And then we'll move on to kind of what some of the data is that you'll be able to see. So we're just gonna call this test case. I'm not gonna give it a description, I'll click save. So now we have a case and now we're gonna to wanna to add some photos. So let's add an image. And in this screen here is where we can either pick files or we can just drag files in. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my Hunchly data folder here. Now this is just your standard Hunchly data folder. It's typically located in your documents directory. Um, if you can't find it, just send us an email. And what you'll notice is that, not in our cases folder, but right here in photos, we have a whole pile of photos. You can see there's just thousands and thousands and thousands. In this case, it's 10,000 photos that Hunchly has automatically extracted and stored on disk. And the photos are named by their SHA-256 hash. So that's what the file name is that you see there. So what you can do is literally, you can select all of these photos and just drag them in. I'm not gonna do that for the purpose of this video, but what I will do is I'm just gonna grab some, the first chunk of photos here, and I'm just gonna drag them over into Giro. And now we're actually ready to load these up and it will do some analysis on them. Hopefully there's nothing bad or offensive in any of these photos. I tend to do this uh, to myself in these videos where I have to cross my fingers. All right, so we can see that the status is completed on these photos. 
And we can do a few things here. So we can click around through these options. So thumbnails will tell us any thumbnails that were extracted from the photos. It'll tell us if there were any photographs that had EXIF metadata and GPS coordinates in them. So it'll build this handy little map for us. Um, this might not be useful to you if you don't have thousands of images, but in our cases, you'll see later, I'm fairly certain we'll find an image or two that has it. We have favorites. So how you can use favorites is as you're browsing through photographs, for example, we'll pick this one. I have no idea what this is. It looks like a background image of some kind, but I'm going to mark it as a favorite anyway. And back in our test case, we can actually just go directly to our favorites. So this means that again, if you had a team of people looking at a case, just purely at images, they could go through and favorite them. And then you have a list of what are the really interesting photos that we're interested in. Um, and there's also a very powerful search, uh, tools built into this. So we can search by file name, file type, we can search by hash. Again, this is really useful if you're doing human trafficking or child exploitation work. If you've got, um, you know, you can build up a large database internally at your law enforcement organization and then search based on hash as you encounter new images. So this is really useful. Or you can even do location searches. So if you know that you have a particular area of interest and you've got maybe thousands or hundreds of thousands of images stored. You can punch in a latitude, longitude and a radius and it will come back and tell you whether any photographs were in that area, which is super cool. So this is kind of the case view. This is really neat stuff here. Um, and we also have, of course, just the, the sheer image view, which means this is all the images loaded up into the system. Uh, we actually lucked out here. This particular image here, this little Facebook icon apparently has some data, some EXIF data attached to it. So we can see that the software was Adobe Photoshop CS4. Um, we're not seeing any other really juicy details in here. We can click through some of the information here. All of this is searchable as well. The thumbnail and the ELA. So ELA is basically error level analysis. This is a whole other topic. It's uh, something that's covered in image forensics. There's a great article in eForensics mag that I'll link to in the description below that talks about ELA. But certainly if you're looking at a photograph and you're wondering whether this photograph has been doctored or altered in any way, ELA is a great way to reveal that to you. Okay, so we also have the ability to download uh, a JSON report on this or the original image, or you can actually get a little PDF report if it's something you want to do to put to a case file, for example. There's a PDF report or an HTML report that Giro will output for you. So that's kind of the basic way that we can load data in. Again, using the search tools, um, we can also do that. So now what we want to do is we want to go, okay, how can we create a whole bunch of cases in Giro that match our Hunchly cases and then load all of the images that we have available in those cases into Giro. So how do we actually do this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear out this test case. And then what I'm going to do is I need a few pieces of information. So the first is I need the IP address of where Giro lives because Giro does have an API. We need to know where Giro lives before we run our handy uh, Giro import tool written in Python. So the first thing we know is that the IP address here in the script, which you'll have to set up 7.110. Perfect. And the other thing is that each user in Giro has a API and API key, sorry. So this API key right here, we also need, so I'm going to copy that and we're going to pop it into my Python script here. This Python script will be released on the Hunchly open source software GitHub repo. We'll also link to that below in the description. Okay. And the other piece of information we need is the Hunchly API location. So if you've never messed with the Hunchly API, it's actually just a binary that, or an executable that gets shipped with Hunchly that we wrap in Python. So in this case, we use Python. If you're a Ruby developer, you can do that too. All of the operations are simply just running that command line tool with certain flags. In this case, we're going to be using things like get cases and we're going to get all of the case photos. These are just commands that the Hunchly API knows. And we have some default locations set up here. If you're on Windows, of course, then you're going to want to comment out this line here and uncomment this one. I'm on my development Mac, so I'm going to leave this path for Mac OS X. That's all there is to it. I use Wing IDE to do all of my Python coding, so I'm just going to run the script from inside of um, here. And we've already had some test runs here, so I'm just going to run it here. 
And now already what's happened is we're creating a case and we're uploading images to that case. So we'll just pop back to the dashboard, click on the main link. So we have one case that's been created and we have 117 images with 151 waiting to be analyzed. And you can see how quickly these numbers grow. I'm just refreshing the screen. So we're up to 300 waiting, almost at 300 that have been completed. And we can go and look at what case this is. So it's the unassigned case in, uh, in Hunchly that's happened. If you wanna see just the ones that have been completed, you can click that little eyeball and that will do it for you. All right, so we can kind of start clicking around either through thumbnails. So all kinds of thumbnails here from extracted images. We have our map, favorites and search. All right, so we can see there's still a lot of images being uploaded here. And if we check on our Python script, it's gonna keep outputting that, you know, hey, we're on like 1600 of 2500. And because my virtual machine is obviously running on the same host as where I'm running this Python, it's gonna happen very quickly. The, the data upload is gonna happen. As you can see, it's very, very rapid. Um, but we're gonna let this run. I'm gonna pause the video and then I'm gonna come back and show you how we can explore some of the data such as the mapping, which is really cool, and then how we can actually figure out where that image shows up in Hunchly. So we can kind of backtrace where, using EXIF metadata, where that image lives inside of Hunchly. All right, I'll see you in a few seconds. All right, through the power of video editing, we've loaded some more photos. As you can see, we have in the thousands now, we're still chewing through, there's about 4,300 left to go. Um, but now we can actually explore some of the images that we've captured and see if maybe we don't have some interesting hits. Again, my favorite thing is the map. It's always really cool to me. Ah, oh, we do have a hit. So let's zoom in on this. So somewhere in San Francisco, we click on that little bubble and we actually have what looks like a picture of the California Highway Patrol badge. We can click on the EXIF data and see exactly what's going on. You can see these little handy kind of pop-ups that are telling you exactly what those tags mean. So that's really handy. Cool. And the map again, this is just telling you exactly where this is found. We can look at the ELA. So it might be tough for you to see depending on your monitor, but these are the ELA values. All right. So this is really cool. We now have something I would favorite this because I like the map stuff. It's easier for me to find. Um, but now the question becomes, what else can we do with this? So when we're looking at these photos and we find something that's interesting in the EXIF metadata, we can actually use that information to then go back into Hunchly and do a full text search for that metadata to find what page that was found on. So I'm gonna pop open the dashboard. We have, uh, we have our unassigned case open right now, that's okay. But I'm just gonna take, for example, I'll look at, if we just pop back to Giro here, model iPhone. So. Hunchly actually does automatic EXIF metadata extraction for us, all in the background, all on its own. And so it also stores all of that EXIF metadata in our full text index so that we can search for it. So what we can do is we can say model iPhone and hit enter. So already we've actually got some hits here where we see that photograph and where it was used. It looks like it was in an Ars Technica uh, article here. These were the mugshots.com guys that got uh, nailed a little while ago. And there's the actual image that had the EXIF metadata in it. So again, this is just by us punching in at the very top of Hunchly saying model iPhone, which matches some of the GP or the, uh, the EXIF metadata. We're able to then backtrace, hey, where did we find this particular photograph? into Hunchly. Now we're always looking for ways to improve how we can exchange data with other software and how we can make it easier for you to find things. So if you um, want something like hash searches or other things in Hunchly, definitely let us know. So this is really neat. This is kind of cool how we can take some of the data we're automatically collecting in Hunchly, move it onto another platform that's designed for image analysis in a team-based environment, and then trace back to Hunchly where we actually found the images that we are interested in, or maybe images that had interesting materials. 
So this is really cool. Now there's one other thing that I didn't mention earlier in Giro, especially if you're in law enforcement, is that there are hash lists that you can you can submit to Giro. So this might be um, files from child exploitation or other areas. You can submit the hash lists into Giro and anytime a new image is pushed into it and it detects that the hashes match, it will alert you to that. So this can be really useful that as you're browsing around, you might actually extract a photograph that matches something you already knew about. And again, this becomes a useful little piece of intelligence that you can then go and pull on that thread and try to figure out where you found that image or maybe who was behind it, for example. So again, this is a very brief but kind of powerful video uh, introducing you to Giro, hopefully, which I think is an amazing tool, an amazing platform. Um, and also introducing you to how the Hunchly API works a little bit. We're not into the technical uh, bits of it yet, but we're going to get there. We're going to show you how to do some more technical things with the Hunchly API. And of course, showing you how we can use the full text searching in Hunchly to be able to pull out exactly where we found a particular image. If you have any questions, comments, or this is giving you a good idea and you want to share it with me, shoot me an email, justin at hunch.ly. If you have any technical support needs or anything like that, send us an email, support at hunch.ly, and we'll get back to you right away. Thanks so much for watching.